a good thing we went over cost drivers in the last tutorial as fixed and variable costs are actually tied to that concept. So in managerial accounting, I'm just going to write managerial really quickly, managerial accounting, we're going to run into a bunch of different costs or total costs and total costs in managerial accounting usually can be separated into two types. The first being fixed and the second being variable. So we're going to actually talk about each of these and see how they change in total and in per unit when looking at cost driver activity. So let's first start off by talking about fixed costs. So fixed costs are a cost that is not not immediately affected by cost driver activity. So in the last or in the last tutorial we were talking about chocolate bars and let's say I've got a company named Dave's Gourmet Gourmet Fudge Bars. So it's very high quality stuff, kind of like your Ben and Jerry's or Haagen Dazs of chocolate bars. I guess you can kind of Maybe it's considered as kind of like the Toblerone of fudge bars. So I create these fudge bars and I sell them at my store. And let's say that, let's say that the rent is fifty thousand dollars. So we're talking about fixed costs. So I'm going to draw a quick, quick little graph here. And on the x-axis, I'm going to write cost driver activity. And on the y-axis, I'm going to write the cost. So rent of $50,000, how is this going to change based on our cost driver activity? So this right here is our fixed cost $50,000. So if I, have, if I have one unit or one fudge bar that is produced by, by me and my store, the rent is still going to be $50,000, right? Because it makes no sense as to why creating more fudge bars would reduce my would reduce my total fixed cost. So, even at one unit, my rent would still be 50,000. So, let's say this right here is 50,000. I'll just say 50k. And if I created two units, my rent would still be 50,000 so this is the first point then the second point would be somewhere here and I should probably make the points in pink so they stand out a little bit better and then if we have three units the same thing would apply the total fixed cost would be 50,000 so total fixed costs actually do not change so do not change or I guess you can say the the fixed cost stays the, the same in respect to total cost as I've outlined here if I were to draw out per unit costs on a graph so let me just quickly draw out another graph so remember, we're still talking about the $50,000 of rent. So I'm just going to write cost driver activity again, or just abbreviate it, and then cost on the y-axis. And this time, we're going to be talking about per unit, per unit costing. So if we have if we have one unit, one unit, of course, our per unit. It's still going to be fifty thousand because this fixed expense is going to be is not going to be split over any units except the one unit. So it's just going to be fifty thousand dollars of fixed costs per all our units, which is just one unit. Or I should actually probably start it off here, and then if we were to have two units, two units. Well, then we would have the $50,000, but this fixed expense would be spread over two units. So the amount of fixed cost per unit would be $25,000. So it would decrease the amount of cost per unit 
for our second unit. If we had three units, you can expect as to what would happen, $50,000 would be spread over three units, and that would be about $16,667. And let's just say it's a little bit close around here. So it kind of forms this, this curved tangent. And as you can see, the per unit costs are actually going to change. So for fixed costs, remember that the the total the total costs are going to stay the same while the per unit costs are going to change. So that's for fixed costs. Let's move on to on to variable cost. And let me just get rid of all this. I want to keep the Dave Gourmet fudge bars at the top and I'm going to switch this to variable. So variable costs. Variable is exactly what you would expect from the term variable. It's a cost that changes in direct proportion. So changes in direct proportion to changes in the cost driver activity. So as the cost driver activity rises, our total variable cost will go up. So let's start again with our, our total. Kind of making the x-axis a little bit too big there. So this is for our total variable costs. We're going to say costs again and cost driver activity. So when we have one unit, the amount, well, let's say that each of our fudge bars is $1. So for the first unit, it's going to be $1 going to be, I guess here this is our first fudge bar and this is a dollar. And then second unit, of course, it's going to be a dollar two, but since we have two units, it's going to be two dollars in total. So it's just going to continue to rise two and two. I guess I can draw like a line. And then three units same thing happens, it increases proportionally, so we're going to have $3 of total cost. So for our total cost for a variable, it is going to change, unlike the fixed costs where it stays the same in respect to total, total costs and the cost driver activity. But the per unit, per unit is different. Per unit, I'm just going to quickly draw in costs and cost driver activity. Probably should have drawn these out beforehand. The first unit is going to be $1 as we've shown. So first unit is $1. We'll say that's $1. Now the second unit, even though there are two units, the price per unit is actually still going to be $1. So it's going to not change on the y-axis. And then three units is going to equal $1 each for each of the three units. So I'm not saying that three units is $1. I'm just saying that three units is, each of them has a price of $1 per unit. I should probably write that per unit so it's not too confusing. And then I can just quickly draw a line through these and you can see that the, the per unit cost is the same in respect to cost driver activity. So there you have it. If I were to quickly draw out a little table to kind of summarize everything, might help kind of visualize everything we just went over. I'll quickly draw a little box. And I'll write variable costs over here and fixed costs. And then I'll write also total costs and per unit. So for, I guess we started with fixed costs first. So fixed costs in total are going to stay the same if uh, regardless of the cost driver activity, but the per unit is going to change. 
for the variable cost, the total is actually going to change when cost driver activity changes, but the per unit is going to stay the same. So the fixed cost and variable cost, they're just opposites when it comes to looking at total and per unit. The change is up here for variable cost and the change is down here for fixed cost. And we'll see that the, the cost is going to follow this kind of behavior as long as we're in the relevant range. So the relationship between cost and cost driver activity is valid in this relevant range. And we're going to figure out what relevant range is in the next tutorial. So join me in the next one and we'll talk about it then. Make sure to subscribe, help like our videos, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.